little bit of insight into everything that has happened with Bleach over the last week or so. In case you missed it, I uploaded a video a couple of days ago now where I was talking about what's going on. They confirmed that Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War anime over here in the West in particular, the anime will be hitting Hulu and internationally, it will be hitting Disney+. Plus. But even more so, there was this big thing that got a lot of people frightened. Before we get started, if you would hit that subscribe button and that bell to get notified, we drop new episodes of Forever News every Saturday, 12 p.m. EST. I'd greatly appreciate you hitting those buttons. Let's jump into the stories. Bleach was removed from Crunchyroll in totality, which means that if you want to watch Bleach, more than likely the only place to watch Bleach if you're in the US is going to be Hulu and worldwide is probably going to be Disney Plus. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm still gonna stand with I think that if Disney did get their, you know, hands on this, first of all, I feel like there was a big behind the scenes mess of once the outcry came out about Disney Plus they probably were like we really just want to put it on disney plus that's where we're trying to put our money at and people in the stockholders were probably like it probably should be on hulu fam like anime fans aren't trying to go to disney and they're probably like but we can extend our reach and people like no dog just put it on hulu that's why i'm imagining that despite bleach coming out in you know a few days from now they pretty much are just now announcing where it's coming to so there was probably a mess behind the scenes because again them wiping it off a crunchy roll and all that stuff I felt like that was a kind of mistake too. They probably should have just left it on there because as it stands right now until Bleach returns, you can't pretty much watch Bleach anywhere. I mean, I think they might have it all up on Hulu. I'm not really sure, but wiping it off of Crunchyroll and everywhere else, that was a very big, powerful move and a statement of, yeah, Disney got their reins on Bleach right now and it's going to be on Hulu, thankfully, in the West, in the US in particular, but yeah and in case you missed it chris play that clip so they could see what i was talking about earlier this week with all the info when where all that good stuff of watching bleach it says coming to hulu premieres 10 10 and it says 8 30 a.m pt so is that pacific time if i'm not mistaken wouldn't that be around 11 30 a.m eastern time forgive me if i'm off on that so pretty much around noonish every what's that the 10th is oh monday so every monday around 11 30 close to noon you got yourself some Bleach anime. There you go. We have an update in case you don't remember. It was a few weeks ago now that we reported here on Forever News that the head of Kadokawa, one of the biggest publishing companies over there in Japan, was recently arrested on charges of bribery regarding the Olympics over there that happened in Japan. And yeah, it was just really looking bad. Well, now uh, it got worse for the man. Let's read. Kadokawa chair, vice chair resigned after alleged Olympic sponsorship bribery. Katakawa announced on Wednesday that it has accepted the resignation offers from its board chair Sugihiko Katakawa and vice chair Masaki Masubara. Oh my god, the board chair Sugihiko Katakawa uh, left Katakawa? What the? The Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office had indicted the chair on Tuesday for alleged bribery over sponsorship for the 2020 Summer Olympics. The company also announced that it established a corporate governance inspection committee to investigate the matter and to propose measures to prevent similar issues in the future. The committee members are experts from outside the company to avoid any conflict of interest. In a press conference in the afternoon, the company's president Takeshi Natsuno and other executives apologized for the matter and introduced the Corporate Governance Inspection Committee. Despite stepping down from their chair and vice chair positions respectively, Sugihiko Karakawa and Matsubara remain as board members of the company. The company has not appointed a new board chair or vice chair. This is basically to do damage control. Like, Karakawa is not what Karakawa anymore like relax and yeah so not only is he facing the legal system he also lost his head chair although he's still a member on the board so it's not like they completely got rid of him like once they get him out of the board then you know it's bad or if they decide to rename Karakawa considering Sugihiko Karakawa is Karakawa then you know how things are moving and I wouldn't be surprised if they rebranded like that just looks really bad Karakawa was arrested <laughs> like what and then also the vice chair got it too poor lad poor P poor lad no hey you, you did it you did it dog it is freaking nuts what has happened with this series it's been a roller coaster and the series is only like a handful of chapters in ruri's dragon y'all know that if in case you don't basically the author came out had a few chapters got sick went on hiatus a couple different times and then was put on an indefinite hiatus then last week here on forever news we talked about that the series has seemingly been labeled as a jump plus title meaning it's more than likely getting removed from weekly 
likely shown in jump so whenever it does return it'll probably be in jump plus and probably the only reason they're even giving the luxury to this series to be able to return is right here because of this Ruri Dragon Volume 1 appears to be selling out at certain Japanese bookstores within one day of its release it should be noted that many bookstores lately tend to experience different distribution dates within the first few days after the supposed release of volume still considering the nature of this notice series will more than likely need future reprints and just at the store you can see yeah they got a uh, basically sold out sign for it which more than likely means that this is going to be a major title whenever it returns it comes back to jump plus because it's only one volume i think there's only enough for one volume to come out and it's selling like this which is also gonna maybe inadvertently or who knows maybe this is by design going to build massive hype and anticipation for the next volume so however this happens with ruby dragon this is already a success and it's only one volume deep and there's not even enough content to make another volume so i'm looking forward to seeing what the success is gonna be and i should probably check it out right like it's selling for a reason i'll probably give it a go it's what again like six seven chapters i'll, I'll give it a read and we'll close this bad boy off with the top 50 best-selling manga of the week courtesy of jose underscore k so we got 50 through 41 we got one piece volume 102 12,700 this week bringing us total 1.89 we got spy family in the house with another oh my god man spy family is that anime has taken a already successful series and launched it into freaking oblivion that shit is at what 1.7 with the latest volume volume 9 uh then places 40 through 31 one piece volume 103 13.9 1.8 total really dope stuff there i i still can't get over how freaking awesome that cover looks that shit looks sick as hell uh then we got places 30 through 21 let's see here we got hallelujah baby no <laughs> we got oh my dress up darling i keep hearing like that is really freaking popular let me know if you uh, a fan of my dress up darling i keep hearing how great it is uh that did eighteen thousand in two days jeez detective conan hani no hanza oh and that was a limited edition wow uh detective conan spent off with nineteen thousand this week in four days fifty one thousand gosh dang uh record of ragnarok volume 16 limited edition 19.7 those limited editions dog it's pretty much like the the lux edition of albums you know what i'm saying uh we got tokyo revengers at number 17 with 24,000 bringing his total to 753 oh the zatch bell this is I, I was skipping over a few things in the last one forgive me zatch bell uh 2 volume 1 the sequel to zatch bell in 10 days 71,000 not bad at all wow I, I wouldn't mind checking that out i remember having a lot of fun with zatch bell at number 12 jujutsu kaisen volume 20 with 27,000 bringing his total to 1.4 world trigger 24 days 379,000 total world trigger fans have shown up shout outs to you guys then top 10 top 10 top 10 at number 8 chojin x volume 4 in 10 days 60,000 i know a lot of people didn't like it i know a lot of people were like for them how could you have an opinion that differs from mine but i'm still gonna stand with i would like more tokyo ghoul i don't really know about chojin x i mean i only read up to chapter 15 so maybe it'll get a little more exciting for me i mean it was dope from what i read but it just wasn't like blowing me away like what tokyo ghoul did then i skipped out on this one last week which all right forgive me for this uh the new series from the creator of Full Metal Alchemist, Yomi no Sugai Volume 2, with 37,000 this week in 14 days, 153,000. Oh, it's a hit. It's it's a hit. It's gonna get an anime. It's a hit. Hells yeah. Uh, number six, also no Freedom, Volume 9, in 11 days, 221,000. That shit's gonna be huge, especially the anime is coming. It's already huge, and, and anime's on the way. My Dress Up Darling, Volume 10, 88,000 in two days. And then if you add the limited edition, that's pretty much over 100,000. Dope. Uh, Detective Conan 102 in 11 days 287,000 record of Ragnarok 126,000 in 6 days and the anime is coming and it's probably not going to do nothing for it but yeah and then number 1 yet again Kingdom Volume 66 in 10 days 448,000 156 this week Kingdom probably doesn't need the anime either but shout outs to the anime and Kingdom Manga doing very well